The GARCH 1-1 model is probably the most popular model for estimating volatility and variance. The problem is it has three parameters, and so there's an infinite number of choices as to how to parameterize that model. A popular approach to determining the parameters to fitting the model is the maximum likelihood estimation approach, and it determines for us the parameters that best explain the data that we observe. So the data set I'm using is from John Hall's website. It's right here, the S&P 500 index values starting at July 18th, 2005. And it looks like the data set goes up through August 13th, 2010. As usual, I've collapsed the rows, the interim rows. In this case, it's several hundred rows because this is a tall data set. And over here we have the day count. So day one, two, three, going up through 1,277 days or about three and a half years with this data set. Then there is a daily return. You can see here, it's a simple daily arithmetic return. And then there's a column for the variance that applies the GARCH 1-1, right? The GARCH 1-1, I've uh, covered this in previous videos in this playlist. And just to briefly remind, because this is the model that we're fitting here with the MLE approach, the GARCH 1-1 model is giving us a model to estimate the variance today, day n, as the sum of three components. Omega is the first component, that's right here. And recall, omega itself is a, is a constant term that contains, is the product of a weight, often denoted gamma, and also a long run variance. I'll do LRV. So the long run or unconditional variance is embedded in this omega term. And then the GARCH also adds here, importantly, an alpha weight that is assigned or multiplied to, assigned to or multiplied by yesterday's return. So I'll follow John Hull and use U for the daily return, right? That's U, U sub I, although it's squared here because the variance for a single day is the return squared. Finally, we add the beta weight, that's beta here, and it is assigned to or multiplied by yesterday's variance or the lagged variance, sigma squared, but N sub one. So the GARCH one one, is recursive, right? It's estimating today's variance as a function of the lagged or yesterday's variance. And also that one one is because we, the, this GARCH, probably the most popular approach, lags one return that is squared and lags one variance. Believe it or not, we could lag more than one uh, return and or variance. Okay, so that's the GARCH one one model and it that is this column here, which is to say in each cell, this is giving us the estimate of variance on that day, employing the GARCH 1-1 model under the parameters that we are using. So I also followed Hall here, here because again, we have three key parameters, alpha, beta, omega, and here are the raw values in the model. Just a user friendliness problem with GARCH 1.1 is that omega, because as I mentioned, it's the product of a weight multiplied by a long run variance, and the variance is already a small number, product of two small numbers. The omega term is tricky because there's so many trailing zeros typically that it's easy to get this wrong. So what Hall did is is parameterize this with rescaled values. That's all that is. These are, you can see this raw value here is the more user-friendly uh, or scaled version multiplied by 0 0.00001. And then for beta, he didn't need to rescale it. And the alpha is multiplied just by 0.1 because 0.83 would be an unrealistically high alpha, but 0.08 is a very typical alpha. So we'll use these values, but knowing they're the user-friendly, rescaled or reformatted versions of the raw values. And then just to super clarify this var variance, I'll just redo this last day here. And again, what I'm doing is I'm saying on August 13th, what does the GARCH 1-1 model estimate for that 
for the daily variance. And the GARTS 1-1 model again tells us that the estimate, I'll get the cursor out of the way, that the estimate would be the omega term plus the alpha weight multiplied by the lagged or yes or the previous day's return, but we need to remember to square it. I sometimes forget to do that. Plus the beta weight multiplied by the lagged or yesterday's or the most recent variance. I don't need to square it because it's already a variance that is squared. And I get my GARCH11 estimate. Okay, so what we're really doing here though is we are we have the data set. And the challenge with GARCH11, despite it being the most popular, is disadvantage relative to just a plain vanilla standard deviation or the, even the exponentially weighted moving average, which only has one parameter, is here we have three. And so subjectively, there's an infinite variety of parameters that can be used. We do know that the beta, most of the weight goes there. So something like 0.8 is not a bad place to start on the uh, beta, and let's see, 0.5 wouldn't be a terrible place to start on the alpha. Again, the uh, 0.5 for alpha is really 0.05, so these are the real values. I'm gonna bold them just to make sure I clarify that. Um, however, what we have here is the maximum likelihood estimation approach, MLE, typically see it that way, that will fit these parameters for us. It's a statistical approach that determines the values for the parameters of the model based on the data. So it's finding the parameters that gives us the model that maximizes the likelihood that the process that we actually observed was produced by this model. So in this case, here is the maximum likelihood function. I'm not going to go into the derivation of that because that's in John Hall, and it's a little bit easier than it looks like at first glance because I'll just give you the key idea, I think, if you want to look at that. And it's this, based on the GARCH11 model, it's a model for the conditional returns being normally distributed. It's such that these returns here, which are denoted U sub I, and that's right here, these are conditionally normal. So it's really just a normal distribution function. However, you may, you may know that normal, that the probability density function for a normal distribution, it contains an exponent. So it's easier to just take a natural log of that because maximizing the natural log of something, a function is the same thing as maximizing the value of the function. So we end up here with a fairly convenient maximum uh, or, or likelihood uh, estimation formula, and that's this column right here. So this formula is implemented in each of each of these cells. And the summation here, I'm not going to retype that, is right here. So the sum here is sigma over 1 through m days, in this case 1,277 days, is given right here. And the maximum likelihood estimation approach tells us that the best fit parameters under these assumptions are the parameters that maximize this value. So what I did to do, what I did to solve for that, because I think that's what we need. I think we can't get to it just with the standard built-in Excel. I think we have to use the solver, is that I downloaded the uh, add-in solver. You can get a free trial. And then it allows you to specify constraints and objectives. So in this case, the constraints include um, basically constraining these parameters between 0 and 1. Remember, alpha and beta, alpha plus beta plus gamma, after all, need to 100, equal 100%. They are weights. So individually, they need to be between 0 and 1. Those are primarily the constraints. And then we're telling solver here, to find the set of these three parameters, alpha, beta, omega, that maximize this summation here, which is the likelihood, the, the likelihood function. 
Okay, so I've got that in here because in the inter in the meantime I changed my values, and now I'm just going to let Solver then find these these values, which are the parameters in my GARTS 1-1 model that maximizes this summation, which is maximizes here my likelihood function. And I'll run it now. And I'm going to skip the guidance. And it solves for me. And I get back to the values that I originally um, were, were showing. And it's giving me a beta, you can see here, of 0.91, or that's the beta weight, or 91%. So I'll move that out, having used Solver for its purpose. So that's basically it. In uh, following hole here, we also extract out the long run variance per day because this applies here. In terms of an exam, probably the key function you want to know that once we have these parameters here, we can solve for the long run variance as equal to the omega term divided by 1 minus the alpha minus the beta. Because alpha plus beta plus gamma, which is embedded in the omega, needs to equal 1. And so that formula here allows, to, allows us to infer the long run variance. And then the square root of that is the long run, I'll get right here, is the long run volatility. And then we scale that with a square root rule to infer the long run volatility on a per annum basis. In this case, 22.8% or so. But this fell out of our parameters that were determined by this maximum likelihood estimation approach which really inferred the parameters from the data set that we actually observe. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you. If this video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get updates.